Welcome back to Airstream, Airstream Design using SketchUp. In this series of instructions, we're going to be designing the body style of the 50s type trailers. I'm going to be using a 1955 Flying Cloud as my sample. You can pull down examples of your year trailer and follow along just as well. So if you haven't already got a front view, back view, and both side views of your particular trailer, uh, I would suggest you would uh, go out and get that done. Or if you go into some of the uh, internet selections where they have examples of Airstream trailers, you could maybe find something very close to yours and use that. So let's get started. We're going to go up to File, come down to Import, and when you have your proper file, again, I like to look at thumbnails rather than just the list. So not only do I see the name, but I see the particular image I want. For this, we have to make sure we have Use as an Image selected. Then we'll double click, come down and place the red dot right on the axis, the three axis. And when we do, you can see it turns yellow. Click extend it out, click again, and for right now we're just going to make it a <coughs> random size. We're going to change that in just a moment. I want to rotate the model so the side is along the uh, red axis, so I'm going to use the rotate tool, click on one end of the trailer along the side, come down to the other end, rotate it, now clicking on the M for the Move tool, or clicking on the Move tool up here, I want to bring it over to the corner. Now, you need to look very carefully and make sure you've got it lined up well the first time. And as I look at this, it looks like it's just a hair crooked to me. So I'm going to work at repositioning mine again. And when you're making such small adjustments, you may have to move the move part out here quite a ways to make that a judgment, uh, adjustment. And I'm going to even move out a little further. And still I can't get that really fine adjustment that I want. Another way you can do that is if you look at this box down at the corner that gives you a angle number go ahead and move it as one notch that it will move. Look at the angle, for instance, it says 0.4 down there. So I'm going to type in 0 0.1, enter, and in my case it got me lined up. So you can change that to whatever you need to to try to line up the trailer as, quick, as closely as you can. I'm going to hit the space bar for the select tool back out. Now what we want to do is adjust this to the proper length. Uh, the Flying Cloud is a 22 foot trailer, but in actually measuring mine from the very, very back part of the trailer to the tongue, I found it was 21.3 and a half inches, and so I want to get this to that size. I'm going to take my pencil tool up here, or remember you can just hit the L key. I'm going to only draw a line along the green axis, and it's only going to come out, say, about six inches. Doesn't need to be far at all. Click, and then come down this way to get the length that I want. And what I want again is, so I'm going to type in 21 the foot line space, three, space, one, forward slash, two for the half inch, hold shift for the inch mark, and hit enter. And now I have a line here that's exactly the measurement I want. Since I already have my floor plan highlighted, if you didn't, remember you have to click on it to highlight it, I'm going to hit the S key, which is the scale key. 
And then if I take this corner block and pull it out, I can pull it out till I get it right to the length that I want. And I'm going to hit the select key again. All right, so now that I can see that I've got it the measurement I want. And I'm going to take my move tool, which is the M key, and move this back over to the XYZ reference. Once I've got that done, I no longer need my measurement line, so I'm going to use the select tool, click on it, and erase those two lines. Now, part of the reason for leaving a little guy in here at this point is it kind of gives you a reference as you're working and figuring out the size that it should look about right. If all of a sudden your measurement and your trailer ends up being three times the size it should according to this man, which is an average size man, then you know you maybe made a mistake. We'll get rid of him in a little bit. All right, now we're going to create the square or rectangle in the back to place our picture of the front of the trailer. And I want to make sure I get that box the right size. So again, I'm going to use the pencil tool or hit the L key. And if you can't get it to come very close, what always helps is move in a little closer and you can find you can select a smaller segment. And I'm going to draw this red line because it's on the red axis. So if I go over here, I lose the red and click so that I'm going to move back and tilt back down. So when I go to draw, draw my box, I know my box is going to go from the corner of the three coordinates to my trailer width. So let's go up and select the... I'm going to move down just a little bit, give me some more room. I'm going to select the, the square up here, which is actually the rectangle tool. And you'll notice that the pencil now has a little symbol next to it representing a square. It's one of the ways you know what we're going to be drawing. Click in the corner, and what I have to do is pull up along the blue line first. If I don't, what happens, oftentimes the box will go lots of different places. But by starting here, you give it that vertical reference. And I'm going to go up plenty high, and then pull it over to that reference line, and click. All right, so there's our box. Again, I like to make sure before I get going, I have the style selected that I usually use. I like the architecture design style. You might like something else, which is fine. I also like to keep my line work light and eliminate any distractions on corners. So I turn these two off. And to get my line as thin as possible, I type in a 1 and return and then close my styles window and you can see there's the box that I want for my picture. Okay, once again I go back into File, Import, and find the picture that is the front picture of the flying cloud that I want. And this is the one I want. This time, instead of Use as Image, we're going to do something a little different with this trailer. We're going to use as texture. And uh, I'll show you as we move along why we're making that selection. So I'm going to either double click here or click open, whichever way you like to do it. Bring it down and make sure the red dot from the corner hits the three axis corner. Click. Draw it out till it just touches the other side and click again. Now, one of the things that happen when you're in texture mode, you'll notice I get a little bit of the trailer repeated again, or of my picture. In fact, if I were to highlight this line, hit M for the Move tool, or again, pick it up here, and slide this up here, you'd see I get more and more of the trailer. All right, so what I want to do is draw that line down, making sure, I, again, you want to make sure you stay on that vertical axis so it doesn't jump all around on you. And I'm going to bring it down very close to the top of the trailer and then release. So now I have my picture and I have my floor plan and I'm ready to actually begin <coughs> the designing part of laying out my trailer. Now, we don't need this little guy anymore. In fact, he may get in our way, so I'm going to highlight him. You can do one of two things. Again, hit the M key 
for a move, move him out of the way. 